I'm here at the Hippocrates Institute in Florida with Dr. Brian Clement. How are you? Good. <laughs> um, so can you introduce yourself and what you do here in Hippocrates Institute? Well, Hippocrates is the oldest natural health center uh, for residents in the world. And we began almost 60 years ago. I was just a little tight in those days. And uh, we were in Boston, Massachusetts, in the east coast of the United States until about 30 years ago. And we finally figured out that it rained and it was cold there a lot. <laughs> so we looked around our country here and around the world, to be frank, and we discovered this wonderful place called Florida, where it's sunny 12 months a year. And people from your country and Scotland and all over the world like to come here. As we sit here now in the guest population, we have 100 and uh, 60, 770 people, and among them are 21 different countries. And so they come here uh, for two reasons. Uh, they're very serious one way or another. They're serious health seekers, and many have been told that they're catastrophically ill. They have cancer or another disorder. And the other group of serious people are uh, serious enough not to get sick that they've watched their families become ill and they've watched our cultures and society at large falling apart and the so-called healthcare system not resolving the issues. So they come here to learn how to prevent disease and premature aging. And so over the 60 years, uh, with hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people coming here, we've gained this worldwide reputation of a place where people heal disease. And it's a pretty easy thing to do, but nobody wants you to know that. They want you to think that you have to depend upon them and you have to buy them medicine and you have to continue to do that the rest of your life when really healing is about you, about you loving and respecting your life enough. And when you get to that place, then of course you'll eat the proper food, of course you'll move and exercise the body, you won't abuse yourself, and you won't tolerate anything but happiness and love in your life. And that's what healing really is, and that's what we do here. So when somebody comes to Hippocrates, um, what, do you, what do you do for them? What do you provide here at the center? Well, Farrah, imagine you come here. You come on a Sunday. So you fly in from somewhere on the planet Earth. And we welcome you with our care team. We have a whole team of nurses. and We call them love makers that protect you and love you and cuddle you They're like mommies. Mm -hmm. And they <laughs> nestle you in your room. And then you come and meet all the other guests. The, we don't call them patients here, we call them guests. And you tell stories. You talk about why you've come here, what your hopes are, what your aspirations are. And then, starting fresh on Monday, very early, our medical team takes blood, and consultations begin for the first two or three days guests are here. And you see our nurses, you see our doctors, you see our psychotherapist. Every single day there's classes that begin in the morning, the afternoon, and the evening, and it's education. Uh, what our founder, Ann Wigmore, realized is the broken part of the healthcare system was it was all about dependency. So you're the sick one, I'm the doctor, you need me. Mm -hmm. Ours is radically different. We teach you so that you don't need any, so that you know how to go home, and you know how to eat properly, you know, the importance of the mind and the way that you view life and your perception and how incredibly powerful that is in recovery and, and maintaining happiness in life. And, of course, the movement of the body. And then, of course, we use state-of-the-art technology here. It's not just about diet. So we use uh, electromagnetic therapy, cold laser, undermet therapy, cyber scan therapy, H-wave therapy. I've been really... Uh, acutely interested in this for 35 years. And so as I travel the globe, uh, this year will be 200 days. I'll be back in Germany next week. And just came from Sweden and Lithuania the other day. Uh, we go to the top doctors and now physicists who are using technologies that realize your body is not really physical. Your body is electromagnetic and biofrequency. And so all of the guests, every guest, literally experiences that non-invasive technology. So it's sort of jump-starting the dead battery of your cells in the car. Mm -hmm. So that gets the immune system going. And then, of course, we have 12 pools here. As you've seen, it's, it's a resort setting. It's not a hospital setting. You know. mm -hmm. uh, we have 16 saunas, infrared saunas here, uh, 
classes are going on, not just about intellectual and cerebral things, but we literally get everyone in the vans and we take them to an excellent health story. Mm -hmm. And we show them that 85% of what's in the excellent health story is bad for them. <laughs> and so it's really interesting. And then, of course, we have everyone go to the psychotherapist. Why? Do we think you're all crazy? Yes. But we're crazy because we haven't resolved issues. Mm -hmm. So a lot of reasons people are sick, the major reason people are sick, because of something that may have happened to them a long time ago that they still feel wounded about, they feel sad about. So individual, private sessions are given, and then group sessions. So as a doctor, you may have seen a lot of cases over the past 60 years. Do you want to talk a bit about them? Well, I myself, for over 40 years, that's 60 years ago, I would have been a small okay. tight. <laughs> but the Institute for 60 years has uh, been working with the sickest and smartest people in the world. So back with 35 years ago when they asked me to be the director and I accepted that position, I said under a couple of conditions, not because I was hard-nosed, because I was really quite inquisitive and puzzled as to why people would eat a diet and change lifestyle and heal diseases that mainstream medicine said were fatal. And so we began at that point accruing and gathering data and information. And it wasn't until really recently, starting maybe 10, 15 years ago, some of the real cutting edge scientists from around the world would come to us and say, we want to review your data. We want to see what's going on because my God, you know, when you have cases where liver cancer have reversed, and you're telling us that almost 100% of type two diabetes is correctable within months. Uh, how is that possible? And frankly, I didn't know. We watched it happening, but we didn't know how it happened. Yeah. And so, slowly but surely, it's trickled down, and now the spigot is getting a little bit open at this stage. Uh, just the other day, I was with Dr. Esselstyn uh, from Forks Over Knife fame, and he's done brilliant work for 30 years on research showing how easy it is to reverse a heart disease, which really isn't a disease in most cases, just by eating a plant-based diet. And what's great, we spoke together at a medical school in Eastern Europe. And uh, when I gave my presentation and showed how uh, people reverse cancer, uh, this 81-year-old man was stunned. And he said to me, well, you know, where's the research on it? And I said, well, you know, we have a little bit people have done, but we really need more. So guess what? We're doing more research again. Uh, just a month ago, a young lady Zurich from Germany from the university with doctorates came here and that university is looking at our data and gathering information. Uh, we're just finishing up a study with the University of California now. We're you know, out in the world, the nasty world there, they're telling uh, people that cancer is genetic. Uh, if it were genetic, not one person in 60 years would ever have recovered here because we haven't figured out how to change genes yet. Nobody really has. Mm -hmm. But we change lifestyle. And that's why tens of thousands of people, not through genetic change, but lifestyle change, called epigenetics, are getting well. So hopefully by next year, they're going to publish a study uh, that literally shows uh, stage four diseases that they admit they have zero success rate with, uh, how they recover. And it's not one thing, as I pointed out, it's attitude, it's diet, uh, in our case, to expedite the recovery process. So, when a person's really sick, you have to do more than just diet to jack up the immune system. Uh, all of that together can literally lead to a person's recovery. What kind of foods do you offer your um, guests? <laughs> well, the food that every human being was meant to eat, unprocessed plant-based food. Uh, this is what I've been thriving on, and I brought four children up on, and I have four grandchildren that are thriving on this now. And Hundreds and hundreds, I've worked with actually 250,000 people in my lifetime. I've never seen one person that didn't flourish when you give them living food. It gives them life force, it gives them energy. Uh, this is the most nutritious diet on the planet Earth. And in great part, that's why we had this long, long reputation of people recovering from disease. And those of us that live this way, you know, I'm well into my 60s now. We just really don't age the way the rest of the population does. Mm -hmm. Not because there's magic or we have some product we can sell you. We just are doing what every other creature on earth does. I mean, I'm 40, so. <laughs> 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 you're, not, you're, not, you're looking good for 40. 
We're not, we're not cooking. We're, yeah. not, we're, not, we're not destroying. We're not processing. We're not chemicalizing. We're not pesticiding. Mm -hmm. We're just giving an unadulterated, pure form of nutrition. So it's vegan. It's completely plant-based vegan. I mean, mm -hmm. anyone that would consume an animal-based food at this point in history, shame on you. It's a absolute sign of unconsciousness and your lack of respect for the planet that you live on, unless your own body. I mean, there is overwhelming tsunamis of data now that prove, without any question, that the mass majority of reasons that we have greenhouse gases, degradation of the earth, we're fishing out our oceans, uh, they seem to be uh, void of, of life, as far as the scientists tell us, by the middle of the century. And it's because we're consuming animals. And there's absolutely no need of it. Uh, for a handful of businesses, the meat and dairy industry, uh, to literally control governments to such a point that propagandized us from the time we were children and told us literally that if you don't have meat, you have protein deficiency. Well, damn it, do I look like I have protein deficiency? Mm -hmm. uh, do the Olympic athletes we've trained have protein deficiency? Uh, do the people who have come here to reverse disease get protein deficiency? The opposite. And we have hundreds of thousands of blood tests to show that. Mm -hmm. And do people have bad bones when they, in fact, don't take milk from another species? No. Uh, Asian people, by the way, have never taken milk from another species. And who has the osteoporosis? People in your country and mine, not people in Asia. And in fact, who has the most arthritis? I know in your country they always say, it's the dampness that does it. No, it's the milk that does it. It's the cheese that does it. It's the yogurt that does it. It's the kefir that does it. And the list goes on. It's just really criminal, in my opinion, that we've allowed a couple of businesses, and that's all they are, and sleazy businesses, that slaughter animals, literally, uh, to, to make a living, and take from the breast of the milk their own cow and keep them perpetually impregnated with hormones. Uh, that we let them control us. And but then what about B12? Well, B12 is something that meat eaters have a larger deficiency with than vegans. Mm -hmm. And I'm the guy to talk to about that because it's nearly 20 years of research I've done. Mm -hmm. And this is the bad news for the listeners. 70% of the population of the world have a B12 deficiency. Mm -hmm. And not to get elaborate or scientific on you, but what happened is our intestinal tract has morphed. It's not like it was hundreds and hundreds of years ago. And so, a B12 is literally a bacteria. It's not a B vitamin. It was, when it was discovered, we didn't know what a pro or prebiotic is. And so we put it in properly in the category of B vitamins. And so you need to get a bacterial form of that, since that morphing of the intestinal tract has worked the potential for you to sustain B12. You need to take this supplement. It's the only supplement I can tell you, all of you, you need to take without even knowing it without even having our medical team look at blood tests here. And that's a definite. And again, I've been doing really serious studies on that for two decades now. Mm -hmm. okay. um, and you know where you gave me that information from? That's how the meat and dairy industry have you corrupted and everyone else. Mm -hmm. They've actually convinced you you're going to starve of protein deficiency, mm -hmm. your bones are going to crumble, and you're going to have B12 deficiency. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I can show you data that says meat eaters, fish eaters, pork eaters, Dairy eaters have more B12 deficiencies. Mm -hmm. And who has the least? Raw vegans. Why? We get bacteria in raw food. Mm -hmm. Cooked vegans have a higher amount. Meat eaters have higher than that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I just wanted to get that B12 in there because a lot of people have to tell me about that. Because oh, <laughs> everyone's corrupted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're like robots. <laughs> 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 the consciousness. So what's your standard protocol for somebody who comes in? Um, would you have something separate uh, for somebody who has cancer than someone who... We individualize the program. That's why we have 216 team members here. You know, the most we take is 100 and some guests, and we have double the amount of team members because we individualize the program. And once you graduate from the program, because we perceive this as an educational process foremost, so that you become independent. Then for the rest of your life for free, we counsel you. Now that doesn't mean you neurotic people pick up the phone and call us every 10 minutes. It means that you go back to your doctor who's going to take blood tests and scans, and periodically you send that back to our team, and we make analysis of that. Now that helps in three ways. It helps you stick to the program. 
and for us to guide you and hold your hand. It helps to collect data uh, here. So here's Mary who came with heart problems, and here she is a year later, two years, five, 10, 20 years later, and we have all of that information on the data. But most important, what it does is leave a legacy for the next generation. We consider what we're doing here the future of medicine. And we're going to get back to lifestyle medicine. And I believe we could actually eradicate almost within a short period of time, three years, 80 to 85 percent of all the major diseases, cancers, heart disease, diabetes, if we just change lifestyles. And it's so simple, and sadly, the most well-educated people don't seem to understand this. We've been doing it here for six decades. Uh, so along with your protocols, um, would you recommend any supplements or anything else? Yes, so uh, when Hippocrates began in the 1950s, our founder wisely said, uh, supplements uh, were not such a good thing. Now, by default, I've become, I guess, the global's leading expert on supplementation. Uh, many years ago, I wrote a book called Supplements Exposed, and I showed that more than 90% of supplements are literally a fraud. They're dangerous for you to take. Forget not giving you what they're supposed to, they're dangerous. Because they're made out of oil, the same oil that you put into your automobile. Uh, coal tar, the same substance that they put on the ground on the roads. Uh, turpentine in the case of vitamin E. But I'm a major fan of supplementation, and I'll explain why in a minute. But most people, even eating healthy diets today, because those foods are grown in depleted soil, lack nutrition. The other thing is you and I are radically different than any humans have been in the past. Uh, we have cell phones, we have laptop computers, we have large screen TV, we have 24 hour news. Uh, do you realize what it was like in your great grandparents' generation? They lived on a farm. Mm -hmm. They had none of the above, they didn't have a radio. And who they knew was their family and maybe the neighbors. Mm -hmm. They didn't go on holidays in most cases. They ate organic food that they grew out of their own farm. Mm -hmm. And so can you compare the stress loads of somebody today compared to 100, 150 years ago. So as we get more stressed, we burn more nutrition up. When you're sleeping, you're more stressed than a person ever was today. And it's going to get worse, because the information age, mm -hmm. what we're doing right here, by the way, is information, mm -hmm. is literally overwhelming people. It's overwhelming people. <laughs> and so you need more nutrition than ever. You have less nutrition in the soil than ever, even if you're eating a plant-based diet and organic diet. And so, yes, you need supplementation. Plus, there's a lot of us that are really happy to be alive, so we want to live longer. So the use of things like not only B12, a prerequisite for everyone today, a bacterial form, but algaes, you know, the highest protein food on the planet is an algae, pollens in some cases, uh, you know, targeted minerals that people need. And we determine this from highly sophisticated uh, testing that really take your cells out, open them up, and literally see what's been digested or absorbed into the cell. Mm -hmm. I'm not interested in the standard nutritional tests. They're bogus. Because what they do is take out of your blood and see what's floating in the blood. I don't care what's floating in the blood. It's not used in the cell. It's not usable. It's not working. Mm -hmm. So it's mainly whole food supplements. It's all whole food supplements. Mm -hmm. That means alive, plant-based, without heating above 115. We created a standard that we're hoping eventually will be an international standard called NOS, Natural Occurring Standards. So that when you, the consumer, go into the health store, you'll see that label and know it's pure, plant-based, organic, and unadulterated. Mm -hmm. So what kind of time frame do you put on a person who comes in with, say, cancer? Well, number one, it depends upon their imagination mm -hmm. and their self-worth. Okay. So the general time we see people bring about their own recovery, because we don't heal people here. Mm -hmm. The other fraud in healthcare, even the natural healthcare, is you come to me, you pay me, I heal you. That's absolutely wrong, nobody does that. What we do, you come to me, we teach you, we support you, we love you, you heal you. And so a person who has a real passion for life, uh, we call it the PP, personal passion, you literally can bring about recoveries once you realize you may be dying pretty rapidly. But about a two year protocol is what we see in most cases. So we see people starting to turn the corner a little over a year, doesn't mean you know, they're sick and then one day they get better. It's a progressive, slow but sure. It's like the seasons change. You know, we don't go from snowstorms to, you know, 40 degree weather. And we basically have spring and autumn through that. And that's how healing progresses. 
Uh, you see every once in a while remarkable uh, reversals of disorder, but that's the exception. Now, they're the things that people write about and the stories we tell in movies. And yes, they do happen, and I've experienced that hundreds of times with people. But usually it's a laborious, slow process, and it's really about, again, your imagination. Mm -hmm. Do you really want to live? Can you have the visions to do that? Mm -hmm. um, do you have the wherewithal to really 100% immerse yourself in you? Because it's about you healing you, mm -hmm. not about some magic healing. Mm -hmm. okay. And can you maybe talk about a few uh, cases that come to your mind? Well, as an example, I was in New York City about uh, three weeks ago, and a young lady about your age, uh, who came here uh, two years ago, in braces with multiple sclerosis, stood up. She's a nurse, and she works in a very large and well-known hospital there. And uh, she told the story how she removed the braces within 10 days. She went back, and the experts in New York City uh, literally told her she no longer had signs of multiple sclerosis. So there is one small case uh, uh, with it. Uh, I just uh, yesterday I was speaking to somebody who came here with brain cancer 10 years ago, no, nine years ago. And uh, they were given up to die, as, as everyone is rightfully told by doctors, because that's what happens with brain cancer. They never have anywhere in the world had one case where people have come back to life from mm -hmm. that. Uh, when she came here, the cancer was so big, our medical team uh, said, look, you need surgery. It's just too big for lifestyle and your immune system to bring it down uh, to a normal size again and to eradicate it. So she went for surgery. I was on the program then, fell off the diet and lifestyle, came back with vengeance, and she came to me, of course, cross-eyed and drooling. And I said to her, look it, don't come back again, don't ask me for help if you're not serious about recovery. Because I can't help you if you don't do this. I'm not going home with you, I'm not taking care of you, I'm not feeding you. I said, you know, I'd love to do that, but I can't. And the fact is, she got it at that point, because the doctor said, this is it, you're gonna die within three months and completely recovered. Here she is uh, nine years later, fully functional and doing well. So I could sit here literally for the next 25 days without stopping 24 hours and tell story after story after story after story. And it's not because it's secret or magic or we only do it at properties. It's again about self-respect, contribution, and being a human. All humans are capable of healing. Exactly. Getting back to nature. So, last question for you. <laughs> so, what would you say, in your opinion, is the key to health? So, if you don't have a disease or anything, that you just want to live optimally? It's a one word that starts with an H called happiness. Okay. The key to all life, the key to all success, the key to all healing, the key to everything is happiness. And to get happiness, you have to know uh, who you are and why you're here. If you can give yourself those answers and fulfill your life with passionate things that you love, you're going to be happy. Mm -hmm. That's lovely. <laughs> uh, Simple. Thanks. Yeah, exactly. <laughs>
I know, you're nice. <laughs> <laughs> did the same thing, so I understand. <laughs> <laughs> we do so it many takes a while, now, yeah. So. Yeah, it's a natural thing, but it, you know, it takes a while to get used to it. <laughs> oh, good Lord. Okay. Okay, so here we are. Okay, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Your protocols, like if you bring in supplements and enemas and things like that, so... Um... Do supplement enemas. <laughs> 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 we do that. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> Implants, right? Yeah. yeah. So during your protocols... Uh, oh no, sorry, no. Um, <laughs> no. I want to talk about that actually. You do brain so. surgery on that. <laughs> 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 Remember, I'm partly Irish. So. <laughs> we keep it rolling. <laughs> keep, keep it rolling. rolling. <laughs> <laughs> like the Scots. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> it's going to be a lot of outtakes on this. <laughs>